This is Scotland's rainforest, located on our west coast in an area known as our hyper-oceanic zone. This rainforest is one of the rarest habitats in the entire world, temperate rainforest. Covering less than 1% of the Earth's land surface, they are even rarer here in Scotland and the Alliance for Scotland's Rainforest estimates that there's only around 30,000 hectares left. Of this tiny fraction remaining, it's estimated that 40% of these remnants of rainforest have an invasive non-native species of plant that is threatening its future. This is Rhododendron Ponticum. With its light purple flowers and abundant green leaves, you might be forgiven for appreciating this plant as it adds some colour to the Scottish landscape. But looks can be deceiving, and that is definitely the case with Rhododendron Ponticum, as its existence in the Scottish rainforest threatens its very future. This is the story of Rhododendron Ponticum and how it's killing the Scottish rainforest and what if anything can be done about it. To understand how this plant ended up invading our tiny little rainforest, we have to go all the way back to before the miles thick glaciers that carved out the hills and glens of Scotland that we love today melted. Rhododendron ponticum, sometimes also referred to as just common rhododendron, has actually got a long and varied history on this island. Rhododendron as a genus has been around for about 50 million years and fossil evidence has shown that rhododendron ponticum specifically was actually present here on the island of Britain before the most recent ice age, around 20,000 years ago. What is interesting though is that around 12,000 years ago after the ice retreated, Common rhododendron did not recolonise this island, and as such, our modern ecology has developed without the presence of rhododendron ponticum. From the old growth Caledonian pine woods to the internationally unique and important Scottish rainforest, and all of the bogland lochs and rivers in between, this plant has been absent from the development of these habitats for thousands of years. And its sudden reintroduction into this environment and onto this island is wreaking havoc to an already threatened environment. So how do we we get to this point? Well, starts with the rich. Having a perfectly manicured garden was a symbol of status in feudal Britain as it showed that you could spare land to just plant pretty flowers rather than being required to use every inch of your land for crops. And as the feudal aristocracy, the religious class and the increasingly influential merchant class competed for social status, the contents of your manicure garden began to matter more than just having one in of itself. Soon, these gardens began to have flowers and plants from all over the world brought in by those engaged in Scotland's and Britain's colonial endeavours. Enter Rhododendron Ponticum. Common rhododendron was brought to Britain by wealthy aristocrats in the year 1763, and the plant soon became a staple in botanical gardens on large estates across the island. As well as this, the plant was also cultivated to ensure that it could survive some colder temperatures by crossbreeding it with North American rhododendrons that were a bit more frost resistant. This part is important later. Now, some estates that used their land for game hunting also began to plant rhododendron ponticum as its large bushy structure made its understory the perfect cover for game. It's easy to see why it quickly became a garden favourite, with these large trusses of flowers with a beautiful purple colour known as moave. But with each plant producing upwards of 1 million seeds per year, it wasn't long before the plant managed to escape from these large estates and began to recolonise an island it no longer belonged to. But why is rhododendron ponticum so bad for the Scottish rainforest, I hear you ask? Well, rhododendron loves the climactic conditions produced in our hyper-oceanic zone, which means it has absolutely zero problems grown here. It would have a bit more of a problem grown here if it wasn't crossbred with, say, I don't know, frost resistant rhododendrons, but here we are. And as it has no problems grown here, it takes over pretty quickly. And as it does this, it shades out all of our native plants, which means that they don't get the light necessary to grow. 
This is a particular problem in Scotland's rainforest because so many of the species that make this habitat so special and important, like mosses, liverworts and lichens, depend on our native trees to grow so that they can then grow on their bark and their branches. As well as this, this whole process damages the natural regeneration of Scotland's rainforest because as the rhododendron shades out the native trees, the young saplings cannot grow and if they cannot grow, then this impacts the local biodiversity of the area. Animal species that depend on these trees like red squirrel or the hazel dormouse will then be left without food and species of bugs will also be left without food as well and if they're left without food then that means that birds will also be impacted and it just goes on and on and snowballs into this terrible collapse of an ecosystem. There's also the issue of the chemical makeup of the leaves themselves. As they fall they actually take much longer to decompose than native trees and as they decompose they are literally altering the chemical balance of the soil and this has a terrible knock-on effect for all of the species that live in the soil and depend on the soil, which is, drum roll please, hint hint, everybody that lives in the rainforest because everyone depends on soil. It's literally one of the most important things in the entire world. It is hard to understate how catastrophic the impacts of uncontrolled rhododendron ponticum in the Scottish rainforest can be. We're on to the good news because it doesn't have to be this way. Scotland's rainforest can be saved. In fact, I know of one place that's doing a pretty good job of it. I recently traveled to Noidart, a peninsula on the west coast of Scotland, and as you'll notice, slap bang in the middle of our hyper-oceanic zone. Now, Noidart was the site of a community buyout just over 25 years ago, and since then, the community here have been working tirelessly to restore the local environment. And one of these projects was rhododendron ponticum removal, in which they managed to successfully remove rhododendron ponticum from their area. In fact, they've done so well in protecting their remnants of Scottish rainforest that the launch of the new strategic approach for managing Scotland's rainforest was launched here in Noidart, and I chatted to the Noidart Forest Trust to learn more about it. The rainforest strategy is about having, having a kind of joined up strategy to support the, the kind of fragments of the rainforest that exist up the west coast and there's lots of work that we've been doing that's, that we've we've been doing anyway which has benefited the rainforest um, that's that's here um, the rhododendron eradication and the deer management being the kind of two key things from from Noidart's point of view um, and I think because we've been doing that um, it was recognised that we were one of the, the kind of community-led examples where we'd, we'd managed because we've been doing it for so long. You can see, you can see the progress because it does take a lot, a long time. Woodlands don't, you know, recover or expand overnight. So um, I think the paper was the the strategy was launched here. Um, partly because because we've we've been doing it for a while. <laughs> In terms of, of the habitat, it was just disastrous. You couldn't grow anything. Um, but also round about the village and, and up half about halfway up into the woods, you could, things weren't growing because of the roadies. Um, so yeah, watching that transform over time has been pretty amazing just to see the land recovering. Um, and watch that process has been great. Um, and then the kind of patchwork of new woodlands that have been planted is just helping link it all up. Um, there's some really rich, diverse old woodland at Scotus, which um, is part of the rain, Atlantic rainforest. Um, so that's, you know, that's being protected by the, from the deer, but also with having these other new pockets of woodland, hopefully it'll expand and grow. There's no doubt that Noidart is a special place filled to the brim with special people, but there's also no doubt that if they manage to do it, then so can communities and organisations all over Scotland. 
and despite the seemingly dire fate awaiting Scotland's rainforest, I really hope that your main takeaway from this video is that not only can Rhododendron Ponticum be controlled, but Scotland's rainforest can be saved. And if you feel like that's something that you feel passionately about and you care about and you want to help, then I'm going to leave a bunch of links in the description where you can check out organisations working around the clock to help save Scotland's rainforest. And if you like videos like this, I'll also leave a link down there where you can support me as well. Thanks for watching. Catch you after.